Thanks for watching. Today we're going to look at my paint collection. Thank you for watching. Last week I posted a picture of my paint collection on Instagram and people were appalled. People said my OCD can't handle this because it's not organized by color. That's true. I organize my paints by number. So today I figured we were going to have a bit of a closer look at my paints. I only use Tamiya PS paints. They work really well. If you want to paint on Lexan, make sure you get a PS paint. PS paint is the only paint that actually adheres to polycarbonate or Lexan, which is what we call the those, uh, the material for those RC car bodies. So whether that's what you find in the kit or uh, what you buy from Proline or J Concepts or any of the other brands, uh, you really want to have a PS paint because otherwise it won't stick. Now how I have it organized is by number so it sort of counts up. So I start in the very left bottom with a PS1 and then uh, well in my case in what I have in stock the highest number is a PS63 which is a bright gun metal. It doesn't seem to make any sense but if you are used to uh, painting with Tamiya paints then uh, this I think is the way to do it. I learned how to paint with uh, Tamiya paints and it's also uh, something that I will truly stick with. Um, for that reason also, I don't really break uh, a paint job down by color thinking like, oh yeah, that needs to be blue, that needs to be red. I always think in paint numbers. So if something needs to be gunmetal, for example, I know that that's a PS23. If it needs to be a bright gunmetal, I know that that's a PS63. So uh, it's just so completely um, uh, slotted into my mind and into my memory that for me, that works best. So I have it organized like this and then per number I have like a row or or however many cans I have. So if we take a look at my whites, for example, I have six cans of white over here, uh, which all seem to look the, the, the exact same, but they don't because what stands completely in front is already used, and then what stands behind it is uh, either unopened or fuller. So the most empty can stands in front, and the fullest can or unopened can, they stand in the back, uh, like that. Uh, I have like a one glance I can see if I need to order paint or, or not. There's a couple of paints that you always want to have in stock because I know that it is really tempting to go spray with something else if you don't have it in stock or if you don't if you can't get your hands on it and that's really where you can really mess up a paint job. So you just want to have a couple of those colors in stock at all times. One of them is a PS1 white, one of them is a PS5 black. That's also a color that you always want to have in stock. And you also want to have a silver tint in stock. So whether that be a PS12 a regular silver or for example a PS23 gunmetal uh, that's all up to you or perhaps even a PS41 uh, bright silver still really bad at muting my stuff and another can that you always want to have in stock just because it is super handy and I might get into that a tiny bit later is this PS55 flat clear apart from that you can add whatever because from there is just like adding colors those couple of cans uh, are basically the base of uh, your paint palette I'm not going to get too deep into things, but uh, uh, basically the low numbers, so two, three, and four, uh, those are um, great standalone colors, but they're also amazing backing colors, seeing that they're uh, solids. So if you have, for example, uh, a metallic red, so this PS15, and you want that to really pop, use a PS2 red to, uh, to back it, rather than, uh, for example, a black. If you use a black, it will really be super burgundy, and uh, if you use a PS2, it will actually turn out the way that it looks on the cap. Um, PS3, light blue, that's definitely one of my uh, favorite colors. I use this on the Bomber, I use this on the Score, I use this on my Traxxas TRX4, I use this on a ton of trucks, just because it is such a, a great uh, color. I use this on my uh, Axial SE Extender version 3. So in most of my paint schemes you will see a uh, light blue entering at some stage. Um, 
this PS4 is really a color that I uh, rarely use. Now if we go up from there just uh, rapidly sort of like going through it's I think a highly underestimated color just because it doesn't really scream masculine and a lot of people seem to become like super insecure if they need to go sort of like out of the comfort zone. A PS11 pink just pick one of those cans up just because it is a really cool color to use. I use this for example on a the G Mate. Not everybody agreed on that being uh, the right choice but I also use this on sock money. I use this more recently on the Delosi LMT on the Flying Dutchman shell that you see uh, right there behind me. I use this on the GTA body. Um, a pink can work exceptionally well especially if you're trying to create a sky or uh, whatever. So don't be uh, shy in picking up something that at first glance you think that can never look cool on an RC body. I promise you that just given the right circumstances it sure can. Uh, silver I rarely use it to be honest. Uh, same with the gold this is really this is like a Detroit pawn shop gold so it's like dirty as hell. I'm not too big of a fan of this gold. If you want to have like something that looks a bit rich go with this uh, champagne anodized aluminum. I know that that really sounds familiar because this is a color that I actually use a lot on the channel. If you back this with a black you have something that has really nice sheen to it and uh, a really rich tone. Um, so champagne over gold at all times perhaps also in life. Um, copper, copper looks mega nasty. If you look at the cap it doesn't look like this is a metallic color but it actually is. If you combine this copper with for example a metallic orange you get something that is really nice. Uh, something that fades really nice. So this is a super flaky really nice metallic. I use this for example on uh, the Exoterra uh, and also on uh, the G-Mate more uh, recently. I also used a shade of copper or like a hint of copper in the reeds on the Ford uh, Raptor body that I put on my uh, low on T. So this is definitely one of my favorites this uh, copper. Well then there's a bunch of metallics. One of my favorites is this uh, metallic blue. Uh, here again the same thing applies if you want to have something that fades nicely together. Uh, go pick up a can of this uh, PS59 as well. If, you, uh, if you're interested by the way in painting make sure that you hit the subscribe button. I see a lot of people watching are not subscribed. It doesn't cost any money. It is much appreciated. And also if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit the like button. Let's continue. This is by the way this is not a sponsored video. I'm not sponsored by Tamiya. I bought all of these cans myself. Uh, some people were outraged saying like hey that's like $1500 of uh, paint because there's like over 150 cans here. I know it's not like I bought this in like one afternoon. This is like multiple years of me buying slightly too much paint. So if I need 8 cans I might actually buy 12 maybe even 14 or on a bad day 18 just because I'm a bit of a hoarder and it's really nice to have a box of crayons like uh, like this. And um, this blue metallic is a fantastic color combine it with this dark blue metallic and you are really in for a treat I think in uh, what is possible with it. Then there's a bunch of other metallic colors. One that particularly stinks is this uh, not to use but to uh, to smell it is this uh, metallic purple. Make sure that you always use a good respirator, always use a good uh, face mask and always uh, you work in a well ventilated area just to avoid uh, breathing in too much of these uh, fumes because they're really not good for you. Camel yellow. This is mostly, most likely this is the type of yellow that you want to have if you're looking for a yellow to put on an RC body. Uh, this regular yellow despite it being called yellow is uh, a bit too bleached out. So so camel yellow is usually my go to yellow unless it needs to be a fluorescent. If we go up from there gunmetal is really nice to actually combine with bright gunmetal. You have seen me do that I think in a couple of instances. So for example the SEX10 version 3, the TRX4, the RS4 build off, so the HPI build off. Uh, that was also a lot of fun on uh, the Pro line Pro MT 4x4 I used the same trick. If you just sort of like play around with the, the backing order of, uh, of these gun metals. So for example you can uh, back this regular gun metal with bright gun metal. You can back this gun metal with a black. You end up with a ton of different shades of gun metal and uh, to have like a bit of an interesting background to look at 
that can work really well. So that's an interesting color as well. Then there's all these fluorescents. I do advise if you spray fluorescent, back it with a white. Don't back it with a silver. I know there's a lot of uh, pro painters who uh, disagree with me, but uh, backing it with a white really makes it uh, pop. Also, well, it goes for any color, but specifically for those fluorescents, uh, spray thin. You don't want to spray too thick to the point where your paint doesn't dry. You really don't need a lot of paint for it to have a certain effect. If you have scrap pieces of Lexan, make a bit of a spray out. That way you also have a good idea of what a color actually looks like rather than just judging it by what's on the cap. This brilliant blue kind of goes the same thing for this brilliant blue as uh, I told you about uh, the camel yellow. In case you're looking for a blue, don't go for the PS4. Most likely you want to go for this PS30 Brilliant Blue. This is a great color. Smoke, if you're not confident and you don't really know what you're doing, stay away from smoke because it can completely mess up your paint job. Especially seeing that you're kind of like at the home stretch. Uh, you have painted, for example, your last color is like a white. You really want to keep that crisp and clean. You come in with your uh, smoke, dirty up your white. That would be true shame. Uh, for smoke, you really need to know what you're doing. You want to spray it super thin. This goes runny really fast. And you also want to make sure that your paint is up to temperature. Um, well, I will just get into that real quick. A good way to get your paint up to temperature, uh, put on your water cooker, boil a liter of water, pour it in a thermos, make sure you have like a nice little pan or pot, put your cans in there, Pour like uh, an inch of uh, super hot, like boiling water in there. And that will just uh, thin your paint nicely. It will also increase the temperature inside of your uh, can to the point where the pressure also uh, goes up. So then when you spray out, you have a really nice thin, even mist. Uh, so always do that for, for any type of color, just because it will also make your paint last a lot longer than if you would not do that. Corsa Gray is, I think, the most disappointing color ever made by uh, Tamiya. This is really not a gray, this is more like a light blue, like you kind of see on the cap. If somebody from Tamiya ever watches this, we need more browns, we need more grays, that would be greatly appreciated. Especially seeing that I think in uh, this coming year, people will be painting a lot more, since we are all more like a bit around the house and uh, creating stuff. Um, Going up from there, a couple of translucents. I don't think really interesting to talk about. This bright silver, however, is really interesting to talk about. Really nice, well, it kind of says it already, bright silver. Really nice metallic-y color as well. So uh, also, if you're looking for a chrome and you're in a bit of a pinch, because to me it doesn't offer a chrome, this bright silver could actually help you out. Uh, from there, there's a few iridescent paints, uh, and then we're in the anodized aluminum paints, which I really like. So there we start off with a silver, then a sky blue aluminum. You've seen me use this also on uh, the Flying Dutchman recently, behind the ships. Great color. Some pinks, some purples, then the champagne, and then I think also a pretty interesting one, uh, Lame or Lame Flake. There is actually a little accent on the E, so I guess officially that it would be Lame Flake. I will be using this on my Rat Cat 64. This Cobalt Green, you might be familiar with this one from uh, recent videos, because I used this on uh, the Gatekeeper. Combine it with this uh, Mustard Yellow. It looks great. Nice vintage tones, if you use them correctly, it can look pretty modern uh, and they're a lot of fun to use. This flat clear, super important for uh, details on the outside, but also to dull down a paint job and also in some cases as a primer. So if you want to use a TS, and this is going to get complicated, if you want to use a TS on the inside of a body, then you could shoot like a coat of primer with this uh, PS55 flat clear. And after that, you can back it with this uh, with a TS, any TS color, and it will actually stick. This is also a trick that I use often for uh, interiors. This uh, light sand color, for example, is a really nice luxury, sort of like tan leather type of uh, color. So um, PS55, something that definitely cannot uh, lack in your collection of paints. If you see it, pick it up. I know that some people have problems finding it. It is definitely not discontinued. I have a ton of them. So uh, make sure you also get some of them. Um, from there, pretty easy. The dark blue metallic, the orange metallic, and uh, then we're all the way up to that uh, bright gun metal. I hope this gives you a bit of an idea of what I like to use. 
Uh, I hope this also gives you like a good overview of that. I only use Tamiya PS paints just because they work fantastically well. I can really estimate always what they're going to do. Also when I blend them together, they stick well to the body. And for me, uh, well, over time they've become very predictable and really nice to use, really consistent in their quality as well. Again, if you have not subscribed yet, please do, greatly appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. If you have any questions about products as well that I've used, uh, have a look in the video description box because I will make sure to list some of their projects as well there with their respective videos. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, stay safe, and I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.